Hello, everyone. Uh, Sampak here. And we have uh, Jason Long from Brainleaf with us today. So Jason has been running like super uh, successful agency business for like a little more than 15 years now, Jason. It's been like more than 15 years now. Come on, uh, we technically started in 2000, so it's coming up. 18 years. Quickly, yeah, 18 years, uh, almost 19 years. So it's, That's I can't crazy. believe it's been that long, man. I can't, I can't believe it. That's crazy. Yeah, so, it really is. It totally is. I mean, given that there are like so many, I mean, like there's like lots and lots of agencies coming up. I mean, in my street, I can count on like three agencies. And I live in like a small street where we have like hardly like 10, 15 houses. So we have three agencies in my uh, street alone. So you can imagine how how much of effort and how much of work it takes to uh, to, to run a successful agency for like more than 18 years. That's it's like insane. Well, it, yeah, it, it's gone up, it's gone down. It has not. It's been a very bumpy ride. It hasn't been smooth the entire time. Yeah, no surprise there. So Jason here is going to teach us how exactly he has scaled up his agency business and he's gonna exactly show us how you can do that as well. There's no sales, there's no pitching, nothing at all. It's just like 100% pure value webinar because uh, Jason and I share the same passion that we just want to help out like as many people as we could. That's how we got connected as well, thanks to the co-founder of Kaivi, Steven. So he's just gonna show you uh, how exactly he has scaled up and how you can replicate the same, especially with offering managed services because Jason, out of his experience, he has witnessed that it is one of the best ways to scale up your agency business into six figures or seven figures. Uh, sky's the limit. So, yep. without having to take like more of your time, I leave the stage to Jason. Please take over, mate. All right. Thanks so much, Sam Path. Sure. Uh, and as always, thank you so much to Sam Path for uh, for putting this on for everyone. Uh, all right, let's make sure real quick. Can everyone hear me? Is everyone good on sound? Is everyone good on? Give me, give me just a. Yep, I'm good. All right, cool. Oh, excellent. We have Rochelle. We got John. All right, perfect. All right, cool. Good on sound. Uh, can everyone? See, everybody can see me as well, right? Give me a yes if you can see me. Oh, maybe you can't see me. All right, well, we're gonna share my screen. Hopefully you can see that. All right, so let me go ahead and, and uh, go with that. All right, sharing my screen. Let me know when you see my screen. Perfect, and so everybody knows today, I, my secondary monitor is um, is out right now. So I can only see what I'm sharing and I can't see your um, questions and responses and such. So Sampath, will you please just notify me when I need to answer, answer a question? I'll jump back over and read it and then come back over to my slides. Is that good for you? Perfect. All right. So, hey, welcome everyone. Thank you guys so much for coming. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and share this. So. I'm just going to start uh, start off with just a little bit about me, and um, and then we're going to jump right into all this stuff. I have a feeling that a lot of the people here already know me, but for the people who don't, uh, it says 17 years coming up. I, I don't know how many years it is now. It started in 2000, so whatever it is since like the beginning of 2000, that's how many years it's been. Uh, I've been doing that uh, for doing the, doing the agency for that long. I've got 11 years as a SaaS owner. Uh, we just recently won an award for one of the fastest growing businesses in southeastern U.S. And that was, by the way, for the SaaS company, not for the agency. I'm an entrepreneur. I'm a UX designer, creative director, front-end developer, project manager, really all of these things combined. And currently, my companies are JH Media Group, Map Dynamics, BrainLeaf, MedRev, and DiagnosticsMarketing.net. Uh, there's actually a few others in there, but those are the relevant ones for today. Uh, I've been doing this for a long time. I... I would have to say that I probably I probably failed more than anyone else I know, and I've learned a lot from screwing it up. So hopefully, I can teach you guys how not to screw it up. I don't know if I can teach you exactly how to be successful, but I can definitely tell you how not to fail. So that's what we're gonna do today. All right, so today, who's this for? 
Uh, we've got agency owners, freelancers, business owners, um, creatives, other people that are trying to grow and stabilize businesses that need recurring revenue. And let's keep going. Uh, so let's, I'm gonna start off by asking a couple quick questions for you guys. Um, while y'all are answering those, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about, uh, well, I'm gonna talk about these for a second. So what services are you offering? I need to know a little bit about who you guys are so that I can tailor my um, responses and my notes as we go through for your businesses. Um, do you have retainer, managed services, and agile projects right now? And what is your biggest issue to getting these clients? So go ahead and take, I don't know, take 10 seconds, answer those up, answer those questions for me. Uh, and while we do that, while you do that, I'm going to talk real briefly about why you need um, these managed services, retainer, and agile projects. The reason is because in the agency world, your revenue cycle is very up and down. It's very, very, uh, you know, you get a client, you work on the client, and then, you know, you get paid from that client, but then all of a sudden, oh, your revenue starts dropping because that client is wrapping up. Your small agency, if you have, a, if you're a small agency, you have a big client, it ends up like that, and then it starts dropping off, and then you got to go search for the next one. If you're a freelancer, it's even worse. If it's just you, then you know you're. It's always up and down like that. And these retainer clients, they stabilize that for you. In some cases, that can be what we call keep lights on money, uh, and in other cases, that can be. Um, just you know, keeping your whole business running. Uh, in fact, the more retainer clients you have or the more managed services or agile projects you have, the more your lights are on and the, the better your business is going. I'm gonna talk more about that in just a minute because that also has a lot to do with the way you budget your business. All right, so real quick, any questions so far, Sampath, that I need to answer? Uh, you see there's a, there's a small tip that says Demio, Screen is capturing, sharing your screen with even the demo. Can you just hide that? I think it's showing up from oh, thing down here. Yeah, I, the problem is I don't know how to turn it back off if I end up having to. I got to hide, maybe. All right, well, I didn't yeah. see how, so it goes from there. All right, yeah. cool. Uh, actually, I would like to come back over and just see what everybody said real quick. So I'm gonna jump back over to here and just see what people's answers are. We have no answers. Does anybody like? All right. There are answers. Yeah, you just gotta scroll all the way down. I'm not seeing them yet. See them? No, no. It kind of ends where it was. Let me, let me double check. No, I, I don't have any answers. That is weird. I can I can see that. This there, there's a guy who runs an agency, and there's a guy who is in internet internet marketing, and there is another person who. Runs custom development on project basis. He's more into like agile projects. I see answers here. Huh, yeah, I don't, all I get is this right here. Okay, cool, sounds good. I'll just keep on, keep on keeping on. All right. Okay, I went past this. All right, oh, by the way, I'm also trying to knock it. Yeah. I got something to add here. Yep. Uh, uh, here's a bit of info that I want to share with you. Jason is currently uh, touring across Asia with his amazing girlfriend, and he has made time in between two flights to uh, present this webinar for us. He had to put through all the slides. He just want to uh, help out the guys. I told him that we have like a lot of agency owners in, in the fam, and he wants to see if there is something that he can help us up with. And I asked him if he can share a few knowledge bombs about uh, scaling up the agency businesses. since. He has gone through the tough phase of scaling up his own agency business. He wanted to share how you can use managed services to scale up your agency business. So uh, he is basically like, you, you hardly have like next 12 hours to catch up the next flight, Jason? Yeah, just uh, yeah. We, leave, we leave tomorrow morning actually. Wow, okay, that's less than 12 hours. So yeah. please pay attention and ask all the questions you may have because this is like pure value that Jason wanted to share with all of us. That's a Disney. Just take over. Yeah. Thank you, Sam Pal. Okay, so going back to what I was saying before, um, this it stabilizes your business. Uh, it, it's, you got to keep the lights on money. Meaning, you know, at the end of the day, if you can cover all of your full-time people 
with your regular revenue, then everything else is just gravy. You know, you can do those extra projects and just make money off of them and just, you know, grow your business, put it in your pocket, have a party, invite me out for dinner, whatever. But uh, if you don't have the regular money coming in, you have to go and kill what you eat every single day. You're always out there just fighting and fighting and fighting to keep alive because you don't have money coming in all the time. So as, a, as an agency, you really, really have got to have these ongoing revenue clients. Okay, so today we're gonna to talk about the definition of these things, acquisition, contract setup, and fulfillment. And by the way, I'm trying to keep this under about 30, 40 minutes so that we have time for question and answers. All right, so first off, Let's talk about uh, managed services, retainers, and agile development. What are these things? So managed services in general are gonna be um, things that are really uh, clear set things. That's generally the way I feel about, uh, think about managed services. The way when we offer managed services, we specifically offer things like compliance testing, like ADA compliance, security on like updating modules, upgrades, WordPress upgrades, Drupal upgrades, uh, general security. Uh, and it's it very much a productized approach. So, all right, hold on one second. My Facebook is going, I gotta turn that off. There we go, sorry. There we go. Okay, uh, for retainers, retainers, when, you're, when you are retained by a client, that means they've got you for a certain number of hours per month. And a lot of times marketers fall into those retainer uh, agreements. So you're doing you know, marketing for them, uh, which may include a set of managed services, but it's also kind of whatever. You're often acting as a consultant, you're acting as, uh, you know, like if something didn't work out the way you wanted it to, you can just switch, uh, switch gears and go in another direction. It's not you know, like you're upgrading a certain number of modules or you're keeping modules upgraded or you're you know, doing compliant stuff. It's a much more free and open kind of uh, agreement. And then agile development, which by the way, is a lot of what we do. We, we're, we uh, are a development shop and so we're really pushing on that agile side of things. Uh, that's a set amount of money every month that goes towards development. And there's a lot to be said about that agile development. I'm gonna to get to that in uh, in just a minute. And it is, by the way, usually for a larger scale work. Like we don't see, you know, in fact, you pretty much never have like, I don't know, anything less than 50 or $60,000 deals going into agile development. And like, like I said, I'll get into that a good bit more in just a minute. Okay, so. These were the things we were talking about a second ago. We've got our managed services over here, just kind of what they are, retainer work and agile development. Kind of lined them up for you a little bit. All right, so <laughs> if, if you guys don't know about Brainleaf, um, it's a scope of work building tool. I built that tool because we needed clear and thorough scope of work documents. Because if you don't have clear and thorough scope of work documents for whatever it is that you're pitching, whether it's a marketing job or a development job or a services or a productized services job, you're gonna end up being in a bad spot. So you've got to be really, really, really thorough about the way you write those things out. And I'm really happy to answer questions about that um, at the end of this at the end of this webinar. All right. Let's talk about uh, client acquisition. So who here has a hard time with client acquisition? Go ahead and just uh, raise your hand, say yes. And um, Sam Path, tell me, <laughs> tell me who's saying yes on that. Answer. Meanwhile, we're running the poll. Do you see the poll here? Uh, let me see if I can find the poll. Uh, let's see. What? I still don't even see the the rest of the chat. Okay, so uh, why don't we get the answers from a few? You can try refreshing the screen and. Yeah. Okay. So I just go right on back to here. All right. So client acquisition. So, um, pretty the reason I ask, you know, who has problems with client acquisition is because. Pretty much, that's always the thing everybody has a hard time with. They're like, "How do I? How do I get this? How do I? How do I do this thing?" And let's see if I've got my. All right. So, 
client acquisition, especially for retainer, managed services, et cetera, and agile clients, is all, it's not about a pretty proposal. So many people want to put together this beautiful, beautiful proposal and you kind of hope the client is going to go with it. It's not about that. It is all about the relationship. It's all about your processes. It's all about your contracts. It's all about, obviously, your fulfillment, doing a great job on things. But the number one thing that I see as an issue, especially for smaller marketers, marketing agencies, is they want to be marketers and they don't want to be salespeople. So, and that ha that comes down to this relationship. So, if you're having a hard time getting clients, then the then it's probably a sales issue. If you've got uh, if you've got a quality product and a quality service and you can't get clients, it's a sales problem. So, let's take a look here. So this is a woman, her name rhymes with, rhymes with Tracy. She's one of our clients. I gave her a little smiley face because she doesn't really like her picture taken anyway. And she definitely would not want her picture here uh, or for everybody to know who she was. So I just gave her a little smiley face. So how do you get those clients? Tracy's company is uh, paid us somewhere in the range of like $750,000 something to that somewhere around there. The way you get those clients is by figuring out who you want to deal with, who do you want to work with, calling them up on the phone and pitching them. And that's the thing that I see so, so, so few people actually go and do. It's all about make a list, figure out what people need from you, figure out the problem you're solving and call them. That's it. And it, like, I, I know it's like so, so simple. So many marketers, they want to like create these elaborate plans to bring in leads and they have all these kind of automated solutions and blah, blah, blah. If you want to get big clients to pay you lots of money, you got to have a relationship. And that starts with seeing them in person. And that's why I, I loaded this picture up because this is at our old office. We would have these clients in all the time. We, we would go to see them every day. We would go to, to hang out with them. We'd go to have lunch with them. We would take them out all the time. It's all about the relationship. So if you want to get those big retainer clients, those big um, uh, agile clients, what, whatever, you got you to gotta take that step. That's got to be what you do. Um, actually, I think I got another slide in here. Here we go. I'll jump ahead a little bit. So I'm going to talk about this one in a minute. This is me over at one of our biggest clients' factories. So the uh, and this has to do with the the whole uh, having the relationship. This client called us and said, and by the way, this client called us a day before Kristen and I were about to fly out to Bali to meet with another set of clients for a few days on end. And he said, "Can you can you drive up here? It's like an eight hour drive." you drive up here and see my team? And the answer is yes, of course, whatever you need, we will, we will be right there. Uh, and that's because that relationship is so important. If I have the opportunity to be in front of a client, if I have the opportunity, opportunity to meet their C-level guys, it's no question. Yep, we will be right there, no problem. Because I know every single time I get down, I get to sit down and talk to them, that solidifies that relationship more and more and more. So let's go back up here. All right, any questions about that? Any questions about that? the, the, the basics of client acquisition? I could probably talk, by the way, for like an hour about that, like easy. I could probably talk for two hours about that. But that's the one thing I see marketers just not doing. Agency owners all the time just not getting in front of people uh, or not calling them and reaching out to them. Any questions? Sam, Pat, any questions? So we have two, three questions here so far. Uh, first one is from Benjamin. He wants to know uh, what are the best practices to build a team for the agency? <laughs> a, a sales team? Uh, Benjamin, is that like a sales team or the team to will be ha happy to handle your clients or what kind of team is it? The entire team. So he wants to build from. I say that one more time. Uh, so Benjamin wants to build the entire team. So maybe uh, the question. Let me reiterate the question for you. So say he wants to, Benjamin wants to build a core team, core team where they can uh, build support and, and, and like the one who handle the project, etc. So. 
the way that I've done it, and, and actually there's a really, it's a really, really good question about building a team. Um, the way that I've done it and the way that, that I feel like I've been really successful with this is I hire really good high level project managers. And these are people that are developers, they're pro they're, they, they specialize in project management, they specialize in development, they specialize in whatever, but they're super organized, they're really good at client communication, they understand the project, they understand the needs, and they can fulfill on it. When you have an agency, you are, uh, if unless you're doing managed services or you're doing something real, real, real specific, but if you're doing kind of an open-ended agency, a lot the, the way JH Media Group is that handles these big, big jobs, uh, which, by the way, is not always the way you have to do things. You can have a an agency that just does one thing and does it really, really well and be super successful at that. It's not the route that JH Media Group went down, but it's certainly not a bad idea. In fact, sometimes I think it's a way better idea than what we did. Um, but what I ended up doing is I hired these really good people where they can run the project. So we hired really good people. We train them up. And training usually goes anywhere between six months and a year. Uh, of them working under me or with me on projects or with other project managers, and then they run their team. And so we have those people in the US that are consultant level people, business analyst level people that understand all the stuff. And then we have outsourced developers, outsourced project managers, out or re contract project, uh, con I'm sorry, contract developers, contract writers, contract uh, designers. And this way, we can maintain, we, we can flow with that up and down revenue cycle because all we have to do is make sure that we have enough money to pay our full-time people all the time. And our contractors, every, every penny we spend with a contractor, we know we're making money on. And this way, I don't have to manage every single project. The project managers can manage it, but we don't have to pay a full-time team that's doing all of this work all the time. That, along with really good SOPs, uh, and really regular uh, communication with our with our project managers and our project managers and the rest of our teams. Uh, that's that makes a huge difference. So and that's pretty much how I've done it. Um, next question, Sam Path, and hopefully about sales this time. Okay, so uh, Benjamin, hope that answers your question. If not, please let us know. So John has an interesting question. So if you are just starting it out and you don't have an office yet, uh, do you think inviting the big clients to uh, meet in a coffee shop or in a higher office or something, or even going to meet at their HQ, is that like a good idea? Does it seem unprofessional or so? No, it's fine. I, I think it's fine. I, I think, uh, so this, this picture here is the old office. Uh, about a year and a half or two years ago, we closed the office altogether. Because clients never came there. They never, ever, ever came. Like, in fact, my team never even came to the office. So at a certain point, I was just like, why, why are we spending all this money? Let's just, not, let's just not do this anymore. And so we would just go to the client's offices. We would visit them. We would take them out. Uh, if, I feel like at least in the realm that we work in, I don't feel like it's necessary anymore. Uh, I think that there are definitely people that would disagree with me, but we deal with pretty big companies and they're pretty happy just seeing me in my t-shirt in my little home office and on Zoom every day. Um, I, I think it's much more about the level of work than it is about having an office. And also a lot of times people know that if you don't have an office, you're not spending money on, off on an office, which means you're not wasting their money on stuff that you don't necessarily need. Does that answer the question pretty well? Uh, yes, to me, yes. John, has an answer your question? If not, let us know. Meanwhile, Benjamin has another question. Uh, what is your secret technique to stand out from other agencies, when, especially when it comes to closing the client? Oh, so easy. I just call them. Like, so many agencies just like, won't even get on the phone with people. Or, you know, like, like remember, I'm reaching out. Like. We, you know, we have our target list. We have the people we wanted to, we want to work with. And I called them with a pitch and I'm like, Hey, I want to do this thing for you. This is why I'm really good at it. And this is why you need to hire me. And nobody else does that. So it's, it's actually, it's actually really, really easy. Um, you know, like th there's a lot to be said for marketing as well. There, there's a buddy of mine right now who's just 
crushing it on LinkedIn uh, um, marketing right now. He's doing, he's, uh, I was trying to talk to him the other day. He's, he was so full on, on sales that he didn't even have time to talk to me for like five minutes. Um, but at the same time, like he's, uh, he has a method for getting some warm leads through LinkedIn and then calling them, pitching them and calling them and pitching them. And I feel like that's, you know, people are so scared to get on the phone and make a quick cold call or warm call that it's, um, it's actually pretty easy. It's pretty straightforward. All right. So I tell you what, I'm going to like, we're already at uh, 1129 and I want to get through the rest of this stuff. So I'm going to keep moving for right now. Sure. All right. So if you're doing marketing, since we just talked about that, you've got to have those ongoing engagements. Can you still see my screen, by the way? All right. Um, so you've got to have those ongoing engagements. This is a story, uh, real quick, about a buddy of mine. This is actually not his graph, uh, but this is kind of the way his graph looked. I actually saw this at a um, at a meetup just recently, and this has happened to us as well. But this was uh, his story. So a lot of times when you're doing marketing work, especially if you're doing SEO work, you end up with something like this. If you're on just a three month contract then you end up with you know starting here getting somebody up to here and then it takes a few months you know it takes like 6 months for that stuff to take effect and then you end up with something like this and so if you're doing those things it's really worth it for you and for your client to to continue paying you like a lot of times especially in the like i said in the SEO and the marketing area you do all of your work on this front you front load all of your work here and so you have to have the ongoing engagement in order to to be able to show the results of that in order for them to see what's going on and in order for you to make back your your front loaded work so that's you know another little thing for you all right so a little dirty a dirty little secret i tell people that i haven't built a proposal in a long time because really I haven't until just recently. And I just just redid the JH Media Group proposals because I needed one. Actually, I needed two, which is really unusual. I normally just send people a scope of work document and I have meetings with them. We just sit down and we talk about it. Um, but does anybody want to see the proposal I put together? I know that in the past, especially when I was getting started, I really wanted to know what other people's proposals look like. So I was going to show you ours real quick. Anyone? We can move on if you don't want to see it. Okay, cool. You just got to tell me, Sam Path, because I can't see the, the other. Okay, no worries. All right, hold on one second. All right. So this was a proposal real quick for, um, for a membership site. I took the client name out because I didn't really want that in there. But this is how we do it. Uh, at least this is how I'm doing it right now. Close down 50%. Okay, I'm a little bit bigger than that. 75%. Okay, so proposal from uh, for client name for this thing. Hope you like it because I always hope that people like it. Sometimes I'll, uh, or for the last couple, I actually change this a little bit. We hope you like it. One that was a little more formal, one that was a little more fun. Depends on the client. Our objective we build projects that make money. We generally don't do a whole lot of nonprofit stuff. We might change this if we did. But in this case, and in almost all cases, we build projects that make money because that's also what our clients want to hear. Like that's that's why they're hiring us to make them money. We're a consultancy. We're not just a development firm. Uh, we've been doing this long enough. This might be a little bit different from other people on on here, but we've been doing this a long time. So we can sit down and take a look at somebody's business and tell them where they're doing things right, where they're doing things wrong, and that's that's a big bonus for a lot of our clients. And then we have experience across, uh, man, tons of stuff. In this particular, uh, for this particular project and for any um, uh, proposal we do, we put together the different things that we're doing in here. So in this particular one, we, were, we had strategy and planning, messaging content, et cetera. We have a whole set of icons and text for the different things that we do. Um, and you can see there was kind of a lot of stuff that we were doing on this one. Uh, when we're selling, you sell your process. You sell your knowledge, you sell your process. In this particular case, uh, and I think actually in the rest of my, um, uh, elsewhere in my presentation, we go back into this, 
this is our process. When we go through and we build something, the client can see really clearly. We know exactly where we are and exactly what we're doing and exactly how to get them to what we're uh, to where they want to be because they can see it in the steps of our process. All right. Some of our recent client work, One Qubit, which is in quantum computing, Lightens Bio, which is a biopharmaceuticals company, uh, Medrev, which is uh, one of our SaaS companies, Brainleaf, which I was just talking about. This client, by the way, was looking for some SaaS help, so we were putting together some SaaS work that we did in our uh, list of recent work. Um, and then the investment. So uh, what we do is we have the investment like this, just broken down into simple things. And you can see there's kind of ranges on this. Um, and then we get a general range. So what we do to begin with is we put together an estimate. And by the way, this is not uh, this is a project that would start as a, um, as a contract job. So it start as something that's gonna be 35 to, I don't know, probably 57, dollars $65,000. And then after that, we would push them towards that retainer agreement because there's so much stuff that would go into this project that they would need help ongoing. And by the way, something really important about that. We do not necessarily protect or want to protect, I guess, our investment in some ways. A lot of people are like, yeah, we're going to do this and then you're going to use us forever. And what we do is we come in and we say, yep, we're going to build this. Yep, we're going to support you. And yep, we're going to train your people on how to do it in the future. Because at the end of the day, so, so, and almost all the time, their people don't really actually have time to do it. If a, if a business really wants us to come in and train all their people, fantastic. They're going to keep using us for other stuff because they're going to have other things they want us to do. But we're not, we don't like hold on super, super tight to like continuing to do the work. We push them for whatever is best for them. So as we're, you know, we, we do this first, then we move them into that retainer style agreement or managed services or whatever it may be. And then we train their people and then we continue that relationship. And they always want to continue with us because they know we have their best interests at heart. All right. And then we always put our values in here. We, we've uh, maintained these values since the beginning of our business and we put them into every presentation that we do. Company leadership. We talk about all the people that lead this business. Some of my favorite people out there. Um, and of course, we most always include Georgia. And then, of course, give us a call if you have questions. So that is our current presentation. This we also pair with our contract, depending upon what contract it is for this particular job, uh, which I'll get into a little bit more in a moment. And we uh, we pair it with our scope of work. In this particular case, it is it was just an estimate. We just did an estimate. We didn't write up a full scope of work, but we had, I think, a basic scope of work. Our first uh, first piece of the job after we got this, uh, after we get this project, would be to write up the full scope of work. Okay, so any uh, any questions about that? And Sam Path, can you, you let me know because I still can't see people's chats. No, I don't have any questions so far. Okay, that's a one from Sasha. You send that proposal in advance or bring that with you? Say that one more time, please. Uh, do you send that proposal in advance or do you bring that with you? Oh, I, I definitely do not send it uh, in advance. Uh, well, you know what? Sometimes, but I guess on the big jobs, no. Uh, on the big jobs, we schedule an appointment and I present the scope of work uh, and we go through it together. Uh, and this way I can answer any questions and I can also make sure that I'm presenting the value of what we're doing. For a little scope of work, like if it's like a little job and we're like, eh, maybe maybe we want it, maybe we don't want it, you know, it'd be nice, but eh, then um, then we'll just send it on. But if it's something bigger, then we, we pretty much always um, present it. Gotcha. Sasha, does that help? Okay, so that's a fantastic proposal, says AGN. Cool, thank you. And John has a question. How do you deal with clients responding with saying that, that you are too expensive? How do you We're do not that? expensive. That's a really good question. Uh, well, let me think about that. How many times did we actually hear that? 
Uh, Kristen, how many times? Sorry, Kristen's sitting right over here. You can't see her. How many times do we hear that we're, not, we're too expensive? Uh, we only hear it from people that we're really not sure about working with. Right. We only hear it from people we're not really sure about working with. You know, usually if somebody's coming in and they're like, yep, you're too expensive, then we're like, cool. We probably don't want to work with you. Oh, okay. Easy. John doesn't matter. Let me think. That means we didn't qualify our leads properly. Yeah, it, you know, Kristen should be leading this one. <laughs> <laughs> she said it means we didn't qualify our leads properly. Uh, if, if we're getting people saying we're too expensive, then we haven't done a good job. We either haven't presented the value properly or we didn't we didn't qualify uh, qualify our leads properly because we're not too expensive we provide a great value for what we do if you want it done right the first time and done you know done really well and you want a business that understands your business and will make you money come to us if and really really if i think that we're not the right fit for your business i'm going to tell you we're not the right fit for your business if I think that you don't have enough money, like it, it's not really about money. It's about value. We do really, really well for businesses that are $200 million and up businesses, $200 million per year businesses. So when we come in, we're coming in to solve a multi-million dollar problem. And so, you know, like spending a couple hundred thousand dollars to solve a multi-million dollar a year problem is a no brainer. If we're coming in to solve like a five thousand dollar problem, we're not the right fit for you. Does that answer the question? Is that is that um, any other follow up questions about that? Uh, nope. No. Cool. Really. So yeah, John says that's a nice answer. Thank you. So I don't say that's that's a follow up question, but that is another point from Taylor here. I don't think that's true. Just because the value is evident to you doesn't mean it's always evident to the client. Yeah. Oh, I, I agree. Uh, and that's why I was saying that if um, if they come back and they say that it's too expensive, then we didn't do a good enough job presenting our value. Uh, and so I would say that most of the time, well, yeah, most of the time we, we don't get the answer. It's too expensive uh, because most of the time, it's not too expensive. And if it is too expensive, I usually come back and I tell them we're not the right fit for you. So there you go. Uh, all right, let's keep going because then we're running out of time. Uh, sure. Any other any other big questions? Any other any other things that you want to – any other big questions? I'll go for now. Container work. So really, it has a lot to do with what I just showed you with uh, with this thing right here. So what we do, the, the way I've always done this, we come in and we do that initial project. And we say, cool, we're gonna do a contract job for you. We're gonna do something, in this case, it's not like a small job, you know, $57,000 is not what I would consider a small job. Um, but it's, you know, a lot of times we'll start off, actually this client, we started them off like 10 years ago, uh, doing something that I want to say is like a fifteen or twenty thousand dollar job. Um, so we start we start off uh, with a smaller job, and then we move them into that retainer agreement. So let me see what I've got. Here we go. So what that means is we end up finding places where they need things ongoing. Uh, for a retainer, it might be like a marketing job. Uh, but let's, uh, yeah, let's say uh, let's marketing or uh, managed services. Oh, we need our social media updated all the time. Oh, we need uh, our um, plugins updated. Oh, we need uh, consulting regularly about how to market our services. Our team needs an expert to come in and consult. Oh, we need a project manager to come in and manage this department. By the way, that's that's one of the things one of our team members is doing right now is helping manage the department of, or partially manage the department of another company. Um, and what it comes down to is retainer work is less expensive. So we're $100, $150 per hour, but if you sign six months, we'll do 135. Or if you retain, retain us for a year, we'll go as low as 115. It is worth it for us and it's worth it for them. Your bigger customers realize that it's worth it for 
for us. And so we can bring that rate down and they really clearly realize it's worth it for them. So because a lot of times what you end up with is when we do, uh, when we're not on retainer, we have to really, really carefully plan every single thing. And when we are on retainer, we don't have to necessarily plan every single thing quite as much. And we don't have to worry about things like our billing. We know how much money we're getting every month. We know exactly what's coming in. We, we don't have to worry about every single little thing and it saves us a lot of money. And we're able to pass that along to our clients. And really, really, when you think about how much time it takes you to collect from, from uh, clients and deal with all the little things having to do just with billing, it's really worth a lot of money to you. Like it really, really is. So it's easy for you to pass that along to your clients. Um, and it also on their side, it helps them budget. They they know that, you know, like, so a lot of times we have a client, the clients that have been paying us not on retainer and they're, it kind of goes up and down like this uh, month to month. And they realize that they're pretty much spending, you know, five or $10,000 per month with us anyway. And rather than having to go up and down on things every every month, we just say, sign on, you're with us. One, you can save a lot of money. And two, you know exactly how much you're gonna spend every month. Some months we're gonna work super hard and we're gonna go way, way over the number of hours we have allotted. Some months it's gonna be a little less. It's kind of like having a, an employee. Um, and that's that's why retainer work is less expensive. All right, let's 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 take a look at how big of a difference it is. So. Let's say we've got three people for 20 hours a week at $150 for a year, and I got 48 work weeks on there. We know $432,000. By the way, we don't have anybody that's doing anything like this at the moment, but we have in the past. Um, or we've got three people working 20 hours per, per week at $115 per hour. This is savings of $100,000. It's like when the client sees that kind of difference, it's a real easy sale. It's, I mean, even if it's half this much money or a quarter this much money, it's when they can see the difference and they know that you've been performing already, it's an easy sale. All right, so let's move on. All right, going into the, going into that marketing side of of, uh, of things, it's really it, you have to have those ongoing things. And the easiest way to say, to do this is just to say our minimum engagement is six months. We start it whatever the amount is. I, I actually put 1500 out there because I think that's really the minimum amount uh, marketers should really be charging for an ongoing engagement. You know, obviously like if you're doing something real specific, if you have like a real specific niche that you're in and like it's it's not that expensive, cool, whatever, but I wouldn't do anything for less than 1500 bucks a month, pretty much ever. Um, it depends on you, but just saying we started this much, it's this much money per month, minimum uh, six months engagement or minimum one year engagement. Actually, I actually had a conversation with a friend of mine the other day who said, I told them six months. And looking back, if I had just said one year, they, they would have done it. There would have been no question. And yeah, uh, it, that's, that's how easy it is. Okay, uh, let's talk about contracts with this real quick. Uh, actually, any questions about, uh, uh, going back one, any questions about this? Sampath? Oh, did I lose Sampath? Uh, I don't see any questions in general here. I think we can just keep moving. Cool. Guys, questions? Say it again. No, I'm just asking uh, everyone who is here whether they have any questions. Well, I don't see any. I think we can just keep moving. Perfect. Okay. Part of all of this stuff is knowing your contracts. And and I have seen so many people, uh, one, I've lost contracts, be, uh, lost deals because I didn't have a good contract and I didn't understand what, what went into my contract. And also I've seen a lot of smaller agencies not, not get the deal because the client took one look at the contract and was like, yep, these guys do not know what they're doing. Uh, and so I want to talk to you guys real quick about a master services contract. Does everyone here know what a master services contract is? If you don't raise your hand, say yes, or no, I don't know what it is or whatever. And while you do that, I'm going to pull up 
Guys, yeah. you got to answer yes or no. Jason, uh, could you please repeat the question again? Um, does any does everyone here know what a master services agreement is? Okay, I certainly don't. Let's see if I have any company here. Okay. Let's just assume that most of us don't have an idea of what master services agreement is. All right, perfect. All right, let me find one in here. It's a good one. Uh, I don't want that one. I want where to put it. It's this one right here. Okay, so when you have a retainer agreement, you're basically saying, I'm going to do these things for you, kind of squishy things. So it's going to be like, yeah, I'm doing your SEO, I'm going to do your marketing, I'm going to do your blah, blah, blah. But as a, as a marketer, things change all the time. You know, maybe you've got a real set scope of work where you're like, I'm writing four articles for you per month and um, managing your, I don't know, your SEO, we're going to do keyword research, we're going to do some PPC, we're going to do whatever. But a lot of times in marketing, man, things changed all the time. They're going to call you up and be like, hey, we got this idea. I want to do this new thing. And you're going to go, cool, we'll do that new thing for you. And for that, you need a master services agreement. This basically just says, you can send us stuff and we're going to do it. And it outlines things like your expenses, your charges, um, time of payment, late fees, client representatives saying like somebody's going to... Um, uh, be the guy that gets in touch with you, client obligations, just saying that uh, if they, I think this is part, this part has something in here that says that if they uh, give you copyrighted work and you use it because they told you, that's their problem, um, that they're going to approve things, that, uh, I don't remember what all was in the suppliers area. Anyway, supplier stuff, uh, legal clearance, et cetera, rights, ownership, and usage, which is super important as well, which a lot of this, the real big important thing says, if you don't pay us, you don't get to keep it. In some cases, uh, you can change this around to say that even if you do pay us, it still belongs to us, except in the very specific way that we gave it to you. You have a license to use the thing that we gave to you. And it's, very, it's important that it is a license. However, this is changing a little bit. We, if you notice in the last one, I was looking at the work for hire contract. That's a bit different. The work for hire contract says whatever we do during the, the build of this thing belongs to you. Really, I don't really care. I, I've talked to some more old school uh, marketers and they're very much like, yep, you got to own it. And I'm like, eh, eh, it's not really that important to me that I own the stuff. Like the client, in my opinion, when I do the work for the client, the client, own, client owns the stuff. I've never had a problem with this to date, um, but I can see how you might. Either which way, you need to know which thing works best for you. Term, termination, arbitration. By the way, you always want to do arbitration. Um, jurisdiction, but uh, important note on governing law and jurisdiction. Always make sure that it is a state and county that you live in. You always got to put that in there because if somebody sues you, you want them to have to travel to you. And especially the further away they are, and if, you know, if somebody if somebody's in, is in California and they try to sue me, this says they gotta come to Georgia to sue me. So good luck with that. Uh, so it's really important you make sure that thing's in there. Uh, let's see, notices, price and costing, and then this has usually has a uh, milestones table, which goes, which talks about your scope of work, and then your digital signature in here. So, it's really, really important that you have a really clear and understandable contract for any one of these things, uh, for, for your managed services, for your retainer, for your, uh, for your agile, especially agile. I don't think I'm going to have time to talk about it. Um, I'm going to run out of time already. But if you have these really clear contracts and you can take that client through it piece by piece by piece, it makes you look so pro. You come in, you really know the stuff and they can see you put time into it. It, it really makes a difference. And I've had the question before, is it too much? Is it too big of a contract? Is it too overwhelming? No, it is not too overwhelming. No, you do not need a one page contract. This is fine. The big clients, the guys that you want, they're used to this. 
They, they do this all the time. They're going to take this and they're going to say, cool, hold on. Let me send this to my legal team. Let me send this to my attorney. I'll take a look at it. It's a very reasonable contract. Um, and it's built, this contract, this master services agreement was actually built by the AIGA, which is the American, whatever, Graphic Design Association. And you can find the entire contract, not modif- not my modifications on it, on their site. Uh, I made modification, or we've made modifications on this over years and years and years and years, and you can find all of those inside of BrainLeaf. Um, let's go back to where we were. Okay, any questions about any of that stuff so far? I'm running out of time. Perfect, okay. All right, I'm gonna skip ahead a little bit because I'm, I'm out of time. Uh, is there anybody here that needs to hear about agile development contracts? This is really important. If you do agile development contracts, let me know, because I'm going to go through this with you, because it's real, real important. And by the way, the reason it's real important is because there's nothing on the web that has a really good agile development contract. It's really, really hard to find. We looked all we looked all over for it. We couldn't find anything. We ended up writing our own. And um, we actually had, like, we had, I had to read a couple books on it. I, the attorney had to read up on it. And man, our agile contracts are so slick now. So if anybody needs it, raise your hand right now and I'll take you through it. Uh, Jason, I have a quick question here. Uh, yep. speaking of agile development, uh, is it focused only on the uh, development or design based agencies or would it work for digital marketing agencies as well? I think it's focused on development right. for sure. Yeah. Okay, I'm thinking like maybe you could you could modify an agile development contract to be for marketing, yeah. but the one that, that we've got is a hundred percent development based. Gotcha. Okay. All right. Nobody wants to hear the. There's no developers out there doing agile. I remember seeing one, uh, but I'm not sure if this guy's still around because he was asking for a replay. So I'm not sure if the if he's still around. I think. So what we can do is we can we can share the uh, link to the presentation later on, and if anyone have questions, we can answer them in the group. Sounds good. Cool. Uh, I, if for uh, so for anybody on the recording, if you need agile development stuff, give me a call. You got to know this stuff. It is super super important. You will get screwed otherwise. Okay, moving right along. Um, I think we talked a little bit about selling the process. Uh, and then, of course, set, uh, set up and fulfillment. Once you've sold the thing, once you've got some of these contracts in place, um, when you're doing your setup and your fulfillment, it's really, really important that you go through and you really well manage these, these projects. A lot of times what happens is you have a retainer agreement, you have something you're doing all the time, every single month, and people stop ta- stop reporting on it. They just say, oh, yeah, I did the thing. Oh, yeah, I did the thing. But then the CEO comes in and he's like, cool, we've been paying this company for like 10 months now, like whatever many thousand dollars per month. What have they done and where are their hours? And then you're in a world of trouble because then you have to answer that question. And if you haven't reported on your hours and you haven't reported on the things you've been doing, you end up getting fired. Uh, In fact, that happened to us before because we got sloppy. We were doing a good job. We were doing a really good job. But we didn't report. We didn't take account. We didn't uh, write up every single hour, and it was very reasonable. Like I, I saw his perspective, and I kind of agreed with the guy. Um, so when you're doing this, make sure every task you know that write out what it is, what you did, when you did it, how many hours it took, what went into it, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, and mark it as done. Send a report at the end of the month. Uh, there are systems you can use that will do this automatically for you, like Harvest and Toggle. Uh, and there's other systems out there that, that do a great job as well. You can use things like Asana or Jira or all sorts of things. Um, but make sure you do it, because if you don't, you can run into some big problems. All right. Oh, yeah, you can have more than one contract running at a time. This is uh, something that I've, I've been asked about before. So you've got your, like, your master services uh, project running. But then you get asked to do like a website project. It's like a big project, you know? It's not, uh, you could technically put it in under your master services cl- uh, contract, but really 
it means a different contract. It means something that is much more technical. Um, and if we go back over here, you can see, let me find this one here. You can see how this contract is quite a bit different than the other contracts. You know, it, it really goes much more in depth into, uh, into, tech, uh, into some of the tech side of things, browser testing, content, et cetera. Um, and so you can run your other, you know, your master services contract and then start up another contract at the same time. You don't have to put them together. And in a lot of cases, it's a lot better to do that. In fact, running regular marketing and then doing a web development project, do the separate contract. It would make your life so much easier. Okay. Any questions? I'm right on at one hour, which I meant to get done with all of that in 30 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, from AGM. So, Jason, you are in a position where business is as usual for you. But let's assume that you are starting today from day, from from ground zero. What will be your top recommendations for this one? Say for three to five things to do. I would not have started a business like mine. <laughs> Uh, what I would do if if I was going to start from from ground zero, I'm just getting going right now. I would do one thing, and I would do it really, really, really well. Uh, I met somebody today who runs like a six man agency, and all he does is link building, and it's like, and he only does link building for a certain kind of uh, of business. And he has real specific criteria he uses. And if you don't meet those criteria, he's like, nope, not doing it. Um, and he runs a six-man team. And he's, he's been doing it a couple of years. It's grown to six people. And the reason he's able to be so successful is because he only does that one thing. When you do big, big projects like what we do, it's a giant pain in the butt. It is such a pain because you have to hire really expensive people that do really complicated work and you have a high liability of screwing up. And that's one of the things that actually comes back to the question about, um, about pricing. People are like, why do you charge $150 an hour? Because we have to account for the risk of something screwing up. Because if something screws up, that could be our whole margin gone just in, in one screw up. So you have to account for those things. Um, but yeah, if I was going to start from scratch, I would do one thing. I would make a, I would pick a one niche. I would do one thing for that one niche and I would do it really, really well. And I would have a team of people that, that were not super high paid people that had to do, that had hard, complicated jobs. I would hire people that were smart, but didn't, I didn't have to pay them as much that did simple jobs and understand they had, I give them this thing and they do this, then they do this, then they do this, then they do this, and then they're done. And that would make, that would have made my life tremendously easier starting about 20 years ago. I wished I could read this, watch this recording 20 years ago. Does that answer your question? Adrian, you still around? I'm not sure if you still are. But you got an answer for your question. Anyway, I'll be sharing the recording later on, so you can take a look. All right. I'm still. I really want my. Uh, I really wish that my chat was working, but it just didn't. Still don't do that. Yeah. All right. Cool. Uh, any other questions? Nope. I think we are good. All right. Cool. Um, then thank you guys so much. I appreciate your time. Uh, right on at one hour. So, yay. I'm usually like 30 minutes over. Um, say it again. Oh, I did not say anything about Brainleaf. All of these contracts are in Brain. Thank you, Kristen. All of these contracts are in Brainleaf. Um, so, Sam Path, thanks for um, my little one little uh, selfless plug in there. Um, yeah. If there's no other questions, then thank you so much, Sam Path. I really appreciate it. I hope this was entertaining, and I hope it was insightful. Um, and I hope you guys all grow huge, giant companies, and you can tell people that I helped you at some point. Yeah, for sure. Thank you so much for putting together this. Uh, I mean, like you, you have just put together everything in like super, super short span. So thank you so much. And I don't want to keep you stay up late because you have a flight to catch in the morning. So thank you once again. Thanks to you and, and to Kristen for putting this 
wonderful webinar once again. See yep. you soon. Oh. Yeah. Yep. Good to see you, man. I'll talk to you soon, Sam Path. Thank you, Jason. And all thanks right. for webinar on. Uh, all the while, hope you got some real good value out of this webinar. Please feel free to shoot up the questions uh, once I share the recording in the group. So see you soon in the next webinar. Cheers. Cheers, everyone.